hello hello Rowan here uh, if if I seem a little flustered or um, distracted while making this video uh, it's because I am this is the second time I filmed this introduction uh, the first time I got interrupted with the amazing news that my sister is currently in labor with her baby um, so I had to assess that situation, get myself together, get composed. My sister does not live in the same state as me. She's states away, so it's not like I can go to the hospital and be with her right now. Um, so I, I just, I had to realize that there's nothing that I can do um, other than be excited for her and pray for her. Uh, so, ah, ah, I'm going to be an aunt. My sister's going to be a mom. Ah, okay, moving on. Um, okay, so today we are doing the hashtag I've got a deck for that challenge. Um, this was begun by Feeding My Soul or Feed My Soul 1212-1212. Um, I, I don't know her, I, I don't remember off the top of my name, her exact channel name, but I'll have her video linked in the description box below, so check that out. Um, but this is basically like a getting to know me kind of tag. Uh, favorite movies, TV shows, things like that, um, but as tarot decks. So we are going to have decks for the answers to each of these questions. So my favorite movie genre as a deck is the first question. Uh, let's just, I guess let's just get into it because that's going to be the easiest way to see what I'm talking about. Favorite movie genre as a deck. Um, I had to think on this one for a while because I've got several different movie genres that I enjoy. I like comedies, I like action films, I like like romance films. Honestly, these days action is probably my most watched genre, uh, but that's more of my husband's doing than my own. Um, I have to answer this question with rom-coms. Um, even though I don't watch a lot of especially modern rom-coms anymore, it's possibly my favorite genre just because it's so sellable. Um, it's, it's just the genre uh, of movie for general audiences, in my opinion. Um, and I have to go with, uh, the deck that is in this adorable little bag with the butt hearts on it. Um, this is the erotic tarot. So, uh, nudity warning, by the way. Um, this deck is a pip deck uh, so we've got candles instead of um, uh, candles instead of wands. It has uh, roses instead of pentacles, shells instead of cups, and um, feathers instead of swords. Uh, so this deck is full of people in sexual positions with themselves, with others. Let me see if I can sort of get this to not have the light artfully distracting from the images. Um, it's all about sex. It's all about intimacy. It's all about vulnerability. This deck is super cute. Um, I love it. I have edged it in this, uh, I guess, neon salmon kind of color that matches the backs, like, perfectly. Um... It's a Tombow marker. Uh, it is, hold on, let me check here. Tombow 885. Can you see that? Can you, can you, can you focus? Yes, Tombow 885. Uh, and this deck is just so much fun. Um, and it's, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, I mean, this card is the epitome of not taking yourself too seriously in a deck about sex. Um, but at the same time, it views its topic as being inherently sacred and completely natural. And that's something that I thoroughly enjoy about this deck. Like I said, it does, it does, um, let me see if I can find an example. Oh, I think we passed it already, honestly. Where did my justice card go? It doesn't take itself too seriously, not only in the Ace of Shells, but there's another card here. Oh, the High Priest is a good example of it. We've got some um, fellatio going on here. Uh, and his face, while he receives this, he's just nonplussed. Completely, completely nonplussed. So uh, this this is a fun little deck, um, full of laughs. Uh, like, look at this page of roses. Like, 
it's so much fun, but it's also so inappropriate, and uh, that's kind of my favorite type of film. Uh, I like a little screwball comedy in with my two people kissing, and uh, that's kind of what this deck gives me. So that is my favorite movie genre, rom-coms, the erotic tarot. Um, my favorite movie, uh, I've got a couple of these, and so I'm going to list my favorite movies, and you're going to have to listen to me. So from the rom-com genre, there is, of course, When Harry Met Sally. Classic, perfect, flawless film, would not change a thing, 10 out of 10. It's probably the answer to the question, what is my favorite movie? Hold on, let me drink some tea. However, I don't have a deck that feels like When Harry Met Sally. I also love The Princess Bride. That's another romantic comedy, and that one's also an action film. Love The Princess Bride. I've seen it a bajillion times. It's definitely up there on one of my all-time favorite films. It's one of the best movies ever made, in my opinion. Um, I don't have a deck for that one either. Um, if I had, like, the Robin Wood tarot or something, but I don't. So, next question. Um, or I, not next question, but next option. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Not really a rom-com, not really an action film. Um, it's it's the last of the westerns in many ways, and the deck that I have for that is actually um, not a tarot deck, but is an oracle deck. The Outlaw Oracle. Independent, authentic, and rebellious. So this is a photography deck. Um, most of the photographs are taken by the woman who wrote the deck. You get keywords along the bottom, so you get a title, keywords, you get an elemental suit, and you get some hidden keywords here in on the side. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, I thoroughly enjoy the aesthetic experience of this deck. I've got an entire uh, review video and playing with pairs dedicated mm -hmm. to this deck, so if you're interested, definitely go check that out. Um, but let's just take a second to appreciate the beauty of this deck. I love the cardstock, I love the gilding, I love the photographs, I love the contrast of the images, I love the backs, I love using this deck, I just don't love the readings that I get with it. it me and this deck have some struggles. Um, I'm trying to learn to love it. It's not that I hate it, it's so close to being a winner for me, so I have not let it go. I'm continuing to work with it. Actually, I'm kind of lying. It's been a while since I've picked up this deck and tried to make it work, so I definitely need to prioritize it uh, a little bit, but that is the Outlaw Oracle. Um, and it definitely gives me modern cowboy. Um, it, it, it's a Wild West movie through and through, but modern. Uh, the next film, or I'm sorry, the next question is favorite color. Um, so a deck that represents your favorite color. This one is another one where I don't have one simple answer. I have three favorite colors, purple, yellow, and green, and at any given time my answer to that question is going to be one of those three, but I couldn't tell you which. Uh, so for that, I had to go with the Yonasa Yaus 7th edition. Uh, this is the box. I don't currently have the deck in this box. Let me reach over and grab that. Um, I am actually in the process of modifying this deck, which is pretty... Um, ballsy of me, if I do say so myself, this is an out-of-print deck. Uh, it's not going to be coming back in print. But I spilled a little bit of coffee on the bottom of my deck, and so now I'm, um, I'm edging it in this burgundy purple color to match the backs uh, to hide the tiny coffee stains. It did not get water damage somehow, but it did get coffee stains on it. Uh, so we have to edge it so that it looks better. Um, I don't know, can you see the coffee stains? Yeah, right there. Gross. Um, just a couple of drops, but enough to make me go, all right, we're going to do it. I mean, I'm not a fan of the raw edge look anyways, but this deck, the 7th edition specifically, is full of deep, rich purples and berry plums. It's got a range of olive and chartreuse greens. Um, it's got these stunning yellows that are like mustardy and almost poopy in color. It is a Marseille... Uh, it's meant to be right in the Marseille tradition, even though it does not look like a Marseille deck. Oh, some of these cards are sticking together. Let me give them the old heave-ho. Um, 
but uh, it's it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, and it's actually one of the decks that I've got pulled for April that I want to do some more work with. When I first got it, I could not put it down, I tell you what. Mm -hmm. And then other decks came into my collection and they distracted me. And uh, I got super addicted to the um, Tattoo Tarot Ink and Intuition, which is another deck that is not uh, Rider Waite Smith E. Uh, but I still really love it. So I'm seeing a theme. I enjoy decks that break away from the Rider Waite Smith symbology, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is my purple, green, and yellow deck, the seventh edition of the Yonasa Yaus. Beautiful. <laughs> the next question is, uh, oh, these are a little, the next three questions are a little bit trickier. Um, so we're getting into some personal stuff here. All right. So question number four, a deck that represents your childhood self. So this one, I really don't have any other decks that I could choose to answer this question. There is... It, it has to be the Phantasma Tarot uh, by Paulina Fay or Paulina Cassidy. Uh, this deck is muted colors, but not muted artwork. It's, um, well, it's busy for one. There's a lot of detail. There's a lot going on. It's bright. It's loud uh, without being necessarily vivid to look at. Um, it's fanciful. It lives in this alternative world where um, fairies come out and play and they're friendly to you and all the animals talk and they know your secrets and they'll tell you theirs if you're good to them. And um, you don't trust pie made by strangers because there could be magic in it. Like that's the world of this deck. And that's kind of the world that I lived in when I was a child. My head was always in a book. I was always in my imagination. Um, to this day, I still very much so am. So this really captures that inner child energy for me uh, in that it's just so lighthearted. And well, I say that as we get to the Three of Swords, but even here he's reaching for the Star of Hope um, with the teeny tiny, I don't know how well you can see it, but the teeny tiny little heart inside the star. Um, yeah, so this deck, it, when I was a kid, I got, I was into like books about fairies and mermaids and uh, magic schools. I liked books that were about like being a normal kid and finding out that there was something special about you and that you got to go be a part of a special other world that took you away from the world where you were. And that was really important to me when I was a kid. Um, being able to escape into fantasy has always been super important to me because of the way it was important when I was younger. So, uh, The Phantasma Tarot by Paulina Fay. Uh, now for our teenage self, uh, as a deck, question number five. Um, this one, I had to, it took me a little bit. I wanted to pick a deck that made me seem a lot cooler than I was as a teenager, but realistically, I wasn't a cool teenager. I was attempted, I tried to be edgy. Um, I was all up in my feelings. Um, I was different than everyone around me, but at the same time, nobody actually really disliked me necessarily. Uh, I, I could be mean sometimes, and that was a personal failing, uh, that's for sure. But um, by and large, I wasn't nearly as edgy as I thought that I was. Um, I had, I mean, don't get me wrong, I had my sharp edges, uh, but much like the deck that I have chosen for this answer, um, I was full of extremes and um, I thought I was so original. I thought I was the only one in the world who had, that's not true. I knew other people had suffered the way that I had suffered to the point where what I was experiencing no longer felt like suffering. And in some ways, I, I feel that way about the creatures in this deck, the animals in this deck, the pips in this deck. Um, it, the Wild Unknown Tarot, I don't even think I said the name of it because it's just so ubiquitous. The Wild Unknown Tarot um, by uh, Kim Kranz uh, is just so much so my teenage self that I have to laugh at it. 
Um, I wasn't obsessed with animals. It's not about that. Uh, it's about the attempted minimalism that is actually texturally maximalist. Uh, it's about the black and white with the pops of color. It's about the the I'm so different kind of aesthetic. And I don't mean to shit on this deck because I, I own this deck. I bought this deck. I enjoy this deck. I use it for shadow work, which is like, that. Is that not the most cringy, edgy thing you've ever heard in your fucking life? Like one of the most popular decks that's on the market. I use it for shadow work. Ugh, shut up. But anyway, yeah, that was Teenage Me, uh, The Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Kranz. Uh, then we have prompt number six, a deck that represents your adult self. So for this one, uh, once again, I wanted to pick decks that would make you think I'm a lot cooler than I actually am. I wanted to say the Zeke's Arcana is totally me as an adult with all these pops of pink and purple and blue and queerness and, and flaunting and living your life and being your best self. And I wish that were me. I wish that were me. One moment. In the end, Oh, excuse me, that tea is hot. In the end, I had to recognize that I am, as an adult, I am this deck, uh, which it does not come, like when you buy this deck, it does not come in this bag. I made this bag and the bag is a mess, but th so is my adult self. So the bag also kind of meets the answer to the question as well. Um, but this deck is my copy of the Tantric Dakini. Oops, excuse me. Uh, nudity warning again. Um, I've actually, this deck comes with a white border all the way around it. I very recently uh, trimmed my copy and edged it in this gorgeous uh, purple color. I don't know if you can see that in this lighting, but uh, yeah, the Tantric Dakini. Excuse me. Um, this is a collage deck that takes itself very, very seriously. It's an oracle deck. Um, it is based on the tarot, but it goes its own way. It does its own thing. There are no court cards in this deck. Um, and in many ways, that's how I feel as an adult. Um, I'm not necessarily doing the things that I was told or expected, like, I'm not hitting all the points that in life you're necessarily, quote-unquote, supposed to hit in the order that you're supposed to hit them. I'm not necessarily adhering to the layout that was given to me. Um, I'm not necessarily original either. Uh, I'm a collage of a bunch of things that I want to be people that I want to be, but I, I don't quite live up to any of those expectations alone. Um, but the sum of the parts is, or the sum of the whole is greater than the total of the parts, something like that. Um, I, I like this deck. It takes itself very seriously and for better or for worse, I take myself very seriously, even though I try not to, I try so hard not to, but it's just, that's who I am. I take things seriously, not because I'm not filled with mirth and frivolity, because trust me, I have mirth and frivolity, uh, overflowing, quite frankly. I don't know where to keep all of my mirth and frivolity, but at the end of the day, I think that I have to be important in order to be okay with my existence. And so I make myself important, if only to myself. And that's kind of what this deck feels like. Um, it takes itself very seriously because it has to. And I, I relate so hard to the Tantric Dakini. It's also very spiritual. Um, this deck is all about your relationship to your spiritual life. Very, like very few cards in here are about mundane things. Um, and that's, that's where I am at this point in my life. Um, I just, I definitely feel like my head's in the clouds, uh, much in the same way it was when I was a kid, only instead of, uh, instead of like reading books and getting lost in fantasy, I'm reading philosophy and getting lost in fantasy. Uh, so I mean, like it's not, it's not really that different, uh, but I, I do take myself a lot more seriously now as an adult than I did as a kid, and that's saying something, because I took myself seriously as a child, too. Uh, but that is the Tantric Dakini Oracle. 
Uh, for prompt number seven, we're gonna take it back down a notch, get a, get a little bit less all up in my personal business, and talk about our favorite song or genre as a deck. To nobody's surprise, I have multiple answers for this one. Um, so. At first, I thought, okay, my favorite genre of music is probably, like, indie, alternative, synth pop. Um, and for that, I was going to say the Rosebud Tarot. Uh, a little bit collage, a little bit old-fashioned, uh, but still new and trendy and uh, full of life. Um, and then I thought, okay, but what about all the alt-rock that I like to listen to? What about the harder stuff that I like to listen to? And then I thought, okay, the tattoo tarot ink and intuition, but that doesn't really feel right either. And I really identify myself with the music that I listen to at any given point. And okay, let me get a little bit embarrassing. Um, that's going to be my answer. It's going to be something that's a little bit embarrassing, a little bit fun to tell you, and um, then a deck that I really want to show off. Um, so... I don't use Spotify, I don't use Apple Music, I don't use uh, Amazon Prime Music streaming services. I don't, I pay for YouTube pr premium, so I'm, I get YouTube Music for free. It's part of the package that I am, am paying for so that my whole family gets it. And um, the statistics that you get when they do your end of the year wrap up. Uh, they're heavily skewed because their sample size is so much smaller than the rest of the platform's uh, sample sizes. And so, not this past year, but the year before, um, I got in my year-end wrap-up of music, I got told that I was in the 0.01% top listeners to Charlie XCX. <sighs> So, uh, let's just go ahead and assume with that information that Charlie XCX is, like, my favorite musical artist because, like, it, she's not, but the top song that I got for this year was, uh, or for 2023 was Kesha's Eat the Acid, which has a very similar vibe to the deck that I'm about to show. So, really, this is the choice for me, okay? The Star Power Tarot. Uh, this deck is hyper pop. This deck is grunge pop. This deck is piss core, but like beautiful. Um, I love this deck. I am so obsessed with it. I talked about it in a recent tag video, um, and I am still just as obsessed with it now as I was when I mentioned it then. I have continued to use it obsessively. I love the guidebook. I love, th I mean, I say I love the guidebook. The guidebook is not extensive, so there's not a whole lot there to love, but what's there? I thoroughly enjoy. This deck is stunning. It's glossy. Um, it's, let me not sell you on it in this video because I will be making a dedicated deep dive uh, after after I feel like I'm more comfortable with this deck. It's going to take me a while to uh, feel like I know the cards, and that's really the point that I'm looking for. I want to have insightful things to say about the deck rather than just going, oh, I love this one. Ah, I love this one. You know, that gets old pretty quickly. Um, but this deck gives me, I'm about to crash into the ocean, and uh, this deck gives me, um, I just want to go real hard. I just want to go real hard. Pink diamonds in the dark. Like, this deck gives me beg for you. It gives me, um, baby. It gives, like, it. it's, I'm, I'm just listing Charlie songs that are high energy because that's what this deck is. It's a Charlie XCX song that's high energy. It's, it's, uh, plastic pop. It's, it's intense. It's loud. It's, so good. I love this deck so much, and I did not think that I wanted the Mars Power because it was so busy, and this deck made me realize that I do. I do want the Mars Power very much. I love how loud this deck is. I love the world that I get lost in when I use this deck. I love that using this deck feels like sitting on top of a, of a, um, Wolfler sub box subwoofer there we go a subwoofer in the back of someone's truck i love this deck Ugh. okay um next one uh favorite 
book genre. Uh, so I've already done romance. We're going to not do that one. Um, my next favorite, I love, I love a good trashy romance novel. I, I do. And I have a deck that would be perfect for a trashy romance deck, but I need it to answer another question. So in the interest of only answering each question with one deck once, um, we're going to go with my next favorite book genre, which is easily, actually this one's probably my actual favorite because I don't read romance that much ever since I got married. I mostly read fan fiction if I'm going to read romance. Um, so my favorite genre of book is Stephen King. That's not really a genre, so we're going to go with horror. Horror is my favorite genre. And I don't have the horror tarot, which is one that I do kind of really want. Uh, I do, however, hold on one moment. Let me grab it from my pile. I do have the Somnia Tarot, which is not necessarily horror, but it's psychological thriller at the very least. Um, it's a photographic deck based on, um, well, based on uh, n night terrors, I think, based on nightmares. Um, it's photograph and sculpture, I believe, is how uh, Bruno, whatever his name is, the artist, what is his name? Nicholas Bruno. Yeah, Nicholas Bruno. That's how he describes it. This copy has been trimmed. Um, it actually, it has white borders all the way around it normally. I have trimmed this copy. Um, I didn't do a great job trimming it. Shush. We're going to move on. Uh, this deck is uncomfortable. It is very much so something is wrong in every single one of these images, uh, but not something is wrong as in find the thing, uh, find the seven differences between these pictures, but something is wrong as in um, Stanley Kubrick moving the chair in the shot so that when you cut back over the actress's shoulder and she's looking at Jack, the chair comes in and out of the shot and you're not supposed to notice it, but you are supposed to be unsettled by it. That's what this deck is giving. Um, and for that, I love it. Uh, I have not worked extensively with this deck. I have done a little bit of shadow reading with it, and I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the reading that I got. Um, this this deck, however, will have its day with me. That day is not today, uh, but this is currently my horror deck, uh, the Somnia Tarot. So this next one, my answer is kind of sassy. Um, my favorite TV show as a deck, a deck for my favorite TV show, and Again, uh, there are multiple answers. Uh, the Gilmore Girls, well, just Gilmore Girls, not the Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls is one of my favorite comfort shows. I go back to it time and time again. Um, I used to be obsessed with The West Wing. Um, it's got some of my favorite character writing that I've ever seen on television. But the thing that I watch the most, the TV show that is on in the background the most, the thing that I reference the most in my life, and probably my number one fandom across all genres, period, point blank, full stop, Star Trek. And what can I tell you? I like Star Trek. Um, I love Star Trek, and specifically, I love the original series and Deep Space Nine. Those are the two that I am the most obsessed with. Um, and we're going to go with Deep Space Nine as the answer because, well, both the original series and Deep Space Nine, their energies are kind of encompassed by this deck. Um, the Thoth Tarot. That's my answer. Uh, Star Trek looks like the Thoth Tarot. Um, Gene Roddenberry's original vision for the original series is goofy in the same way that Lady Frida Harris's artwork is. Um, it's on the nose. It's a little bit mystic. It's a little bit uh, sci-fi. And I really think that this deck gives me Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek the original series loud and clear. Um, it is in order. I've been doing a study with it, so it's currently in order. Let me skip. Everybody knows what the Thoth looks like. It's like if I if I were sitting here showing you Rider Waite Smith decks. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. We get it. We know what it is. Um, I, I don't want to say I love this deck. I haven't worked with it enough to love this deck, but I love that it's tiny. I love that I went with the pocket size. I think it's perfect. Um, and the artwork in here, just it, it just gives me a set of Star Trek. It looks like a paper mache and caulking set of Star Trek. I love it. Um, that's the Foss Tarot. 
prompt number 10 is favorite pastime or hobby. And I've got two answers for this one as well. Um, but they're, it's the same answer, it's just two different decks. That's probably the better way to say it. One moment, tea time. So the first, well, okay, let me just show you the bag. Uh, the first deck that I want to talk about is actually one my, I made myself because my favorite hobby right now seems to be making decks. Um, I'm currently working on a second one, but this is the first one that I made. Uh, painting has been something I have been sinking a lot of my time and effort into, and this was a result of, uh, of teaching myself how to control the amount of water in my brush of teaching myself how to create differing textures with watercolor, of how to control pigment placement and not overwork the paper, or how to overwork the paper should I need to, how to avoid and achieve cauliflowering, how to dry brush, etc. So this deck is really all about my adventures learning how to watercolor better, and that's the reason it's not available for other people because it is uh, very amateurish and I don't know that I necessarily want people to be able to purchase something that is so unskilled. Um, but that is the texture of color, which is a deck that I made for myself. And uh, I'm thinking about making another copy of it that has gilded edges just so that I can have some pretty gilded edges. I might print it on linen cardstock instead of the standard smooth cardstock. Uh, so that's, that's a thing that I'm tossing around. But before I make another copy of that, I would have to finish up this deck that I'm working on. I'm currently keeping it in this almost too small uh, purple velvet bag that I got from Make Playing Cards. And this is going to be uh, the mixed metaphor, mixed media deck. Well, that's what it is. It's not finished yet, but that's what it's called, mixed metaphor, mixed media. This is not the back to the card. Uh, this is just like a separate thing that I did on the back of one of the cards. Um, but this is what I'm currently working on. It is a collage mixed media kind of conglomeration of different techniques in order to achieve a messy punk um, gorilla style attempt of art, I guess. Um, I, I just embraced making mistakes with this deck. I just embraced uh, things being imperfect because it was all about these union, the union of these ideas. So like bleed and cry, like we're, we're, excreting these fluids uh, in various types of pain in order to communicate our needs. Um, cellular cosmic, uh, as within so without kind of card, um, the world's contained all the life within and without of us kind of deal, like you gotta live on for the thing that's bigger than you that you're a part of and the things that's smaller than you that the things that are smaller than you that depend on you like that's the energy there orange blue we've got several different color cards throughout the deck that are just um, con uh, contrasting colors grief and change so like some of these ideas are not disparate but rather uh, collaborative in nature um, so change and grief you know they go hand in hand uh, grieving something is grief is like dealing processing with the way it's like life is going to be changing alchemy and chemistry and my favorite card that I've made so far haunted company so this is a card that uh, is very heavily inspired by the haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson if you cannot tell uh, immediately um and it I, I just i'm very happy with how this turned out it matches the vision that i had in my head perfectly um so that's the last card that i'm going to show you let me put these back um but yeah that's i am currently seven cards and a guidebook away from being done with it but this one i do oh that's another card uh this one i do plan to release to the public um i do want people to be able to purchase this deck uh, eventually. I'm actually kind of proud of it. Uh, so yeah, that's my fave hobby is uh, making things with my craft skills, whatever that may look like. 
Alrighty, the decade that I was, oh no, I'm getting ahead of myself. Next we have my favorite holiday. This one's easy. I only have one answer for this. My favorite holiday is New Year's. I love New Year's. When I was a kid, um, my mother and father were never married. And so when I would have time off of school, there was always a fight as to whose house I was going to go over to. Like, was my dad going to get me for the holidays or was it going to be my mom? And then when I became old enough to make the choice myself, I obviously didn't get to make the choice myself. I was still heavily influenced by my parents. And that back and forth tug has really made me resent Christmas and um, Thanksgiving quite a bit. New Year's Eve was always better uh, because it's not a, as major of a holiday uh, to adults, for kids, it, there's no gift giving. Um, it was a holiday that I actually did get to choose and um, I, I did get that control. And so to me, New Year's is a holiday that's all about tuning into my own needs, seeing what my own wants are, realigning myself with those wants and needs and moving forward. It's a very clean energy. It's uh, a little bit cold and calculating. It's a little bit selfish. Um, and most of all, it's that clean slate. And so the deck that I have for New Year's is the Fountain Tarot. Uh, this deck is, some people call it cold, which uh, does match the energy of New Year's if you live in a place other than Southeast Texas. Um, but, uh, it's, that's the backs. Um, it's party. I love this deck. I love this deck so much. I worked with it a lot in the winter time. Um, I haven't been working with it so much lately, but it, it does have spring energy in a much cleaner way than some of my other spring decks. So maybe I'll bring it back out. Uh, but this very much so has New Year's Eve and New Year's Day energy to me. Um, it's very January, very end of December, very beginning of January, very clean slate, fresh start, do it over, very um, light, like the light of a new day, the watery sunrise uh, after a rainy night, like that's what this deck is like. And got a little, little bit of cards here going the wrong way, let's put them the right way. Um, this is very much so that energy of the start of the new year for me. I mean, look at that full card. How do you argue with that? And so that is the Fountain Tarot for my favorite holiday. Uh, the next prompt is the decade, the decade you were born in. Uh, so a deck for the decade I was born. Um, I wish I had the grunge tarot to show you because that's the obvious answer if you were born in the 90s like I was, the grunge tarot. However, I don't wanna own that deck. I don't like that deck enough to own it. So instead, I'm gonna have to show you one that I do own. And I don't really have anything that screams 1990s except for the deck that I own that is literally from the 90s. This is the first tarot deck that anyone ever gave to me. This is my mother's deck that she bought for herself when she was in college, I'm assuming. Um, so this probably she had a couple of years before I was born. This is out of print, but we're going to take a look at it anyways. This is the Art Nouveau tarot. Um, I Again, this deck is out of print. There are other ones on the market that are called Art Nouveau Tarot. They are not this one. Um, this one, for starters, does not have any gilding on it. And um, it's much smaller than the way... It's like bridge size rather than uh, traditional tarot size. Um, it's very Art Nouveau. Uh, lots of... in. So the minor pips are these stained glass window looking art pieces and then you get these standing portraits for the, um, man, his bulge is bulging. I just tried to, um, you get these standing, oh goodness, what is the word? Portrait. You get the standing portrait for the court cards, um, and then you also get, let's move it along here, uh, portraitures for the uh, major arcana as well, right? This deck does swap the suits, uh, so the um, swords are fire and wands are air. Uh, I got cut off. Whatever. We're going to keep going. Um, so the uh, this deck is 
swap suits, right? Swords and fire, swords or fire, wands or air, because this deck was made in 1989. That was when it was originally published. And at the time, Wiccanism was basically the only face of any kind of occult practice in the United States and generally through the world, but especially in the United States. Um, and when I say the world, I would like to specify English-speaking world I'm referring to. Um, and even then, I don't actually know what I'm talking about, so please keep in mind I'm ignorant. Um, I'm really prone to stupidity. Uh, but yeah, this deck is old and loved, and it sits in a special collector's place in my collection uh, at this point. Um, I don't use it very often, but it is invaluable to me. Very special deck. That is the Art Nouveau Tarot by Matt Myers. Uh, the next prompt that we have is our favorite flower. So I actually originally had a different answer for this than what I'm going to give. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm just allowed to do that. I'm allowed to change my answer at the last second. My favorite flower is the mimosa flower, uh, from the mimosa tree. Um, I don't know why, it just is. I decided it because I, up until reading this question for this prompt, I did not have a favorite flower, you understand. And so I had to just pick one. And I really like mimosa flowers. I think they're cute. I think they're fluffy. Um, and the deck that I have that sort of matches that pink, fluffy uh, energy um, is this, the Zeke's Arcana. I keep mine in a homemade bag. The Zeke's Arcana, here we go. I've talked about this deck a lot on my channel. It is one of my favorites. Um, it has some of my favorite artwork in a deck. It's pink, it's bubbly, it's very effervescent, much like the mimosa flower. It's uh, bright and colorful, it's summer days, it's springtime, it's fierceness, but it's also delicacy. Um, and that's what the mimosa flower gives me, all of those energies. Love this deck, love to show it off. It is a pip deck. It is possibly completely out of print. Uh, last I checked, you can still get it on Tarot Stack if you're in the US. Um, other retailers probably sell it. It might even still be on the maker's website. It has been for a while. She's been trying to get rid of her copies. Uh, so Julia A. Rich is the artist's name. And uh, she used to go by the moniker Zeke's, or Zeke's Lunchbox. Um, or I guess Zeke was the moniker and Zeke's Lunchbox was her website and then Zeke's Arcana is the name of the deck and her name is Julia. Uh, all right, so I'm trying to get this wrapped up. I've been here way longer than I intended to be. Uh, next we have a favorite scent. I don't have a favorite scent. I had to make one up for this one as well. Uh, and so my favorite scent is whoop, knocking over the tripod apparently. Okay. Are we stable? Are we straight? Probably not straight. Um, but uh, I had to pick my own favorite scent uh, off the top of my head, and so I went with the smell of my husband. And uh, yeah, 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 make fun of me all you want. I love the way my husband smells. It's like coming home. And um, the deck that I have that most visually captures the way my husband smells is the Hush Tarot. Uh, this deck has a lot of naked ladies in it, so, you know, be aware. But uh, it smells like the outdoors. This deck, oh, I edged mine. It does not come like that. Uh, but this deck feels like the outdoors. It smells like the outdoors. It smells a little bit like autumn. Uh, a little bit like a body, but not like a stinky body. Um, this deck does have more rot in it than my husband's personal fragrance. But uh, this, this is still the closest I have to his natural musk. Um, and uh, that's the Hush Tarot by Jeremy Hush. It's a non-traditional tarot deck. It does not in any uh, recognizable way adhere to the writer weight throughout. It is a collection of curated art. So a lot of these were not made for this deck. They were existing pieces that were kind of shoehorned into these roles. And so it's not my favorite reader in the world. Some people live or die by this deck. And that's just not me, you know? That's just not me. Um, but it does remind me of my husband. And uh, now we have prompt number 15, uh, favorite food. Uh, my favorite foods, 
I've got a handful of them. Surprise, surprise, I can't seem to pick any one favorite for any of these. But I went with the answer mac and cheese because I have a deck that tastes like mac and cheese. And that is the Modern Witch Tarot. This tarot deck is comfort food. It is um, bright colors. It is something that a baby can digest. This is macaroni and cheese, baby. Through and through. It's a Rider Waite Smith clone. It's not groundbreaking. It's noodles, it's cheddar, it's butter in a pan. You're gonna get what you're gonna get, but boy howdy, this family recipe certainly is tasty, isn't it? Mm-mm, scrumptious. This, uh, this family recipe has breadcrumbs on the top. We get to admire the breadcrumbs, and the cheese pulls in that stringy way that it's supposed to. This ain't no Velveeta, honey. This is homemade, and this is the good stuff. Um, actually, honestly, this deck probably is Velveeta mac and cheese being real. This isn't that down to earth. This is made by a woman who makes comics for a living, but I love it nonetheless. Um, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If li liking this deck makes me basic, then I guess I'm basic. But that is the modern rich, <laughs> modern, modern witch tarot deck by Lisa Sterl. Um, go back. Oh, I hate this box. Liminal 11, I'm coming for you. Uh, alrighty, the last prompt that we have here is favorite beverage. This one, I have a surefire answer to. This one I knew. Um, I, my favorite beverage is my morning cup of coffee. There is not a beverage that I can have throughout the day that is going to satisfy me the same way a cup of coffee right when I wake up satisfies. So, my uh, cup of coffee deck, um, like tried, true, sweet, bitter, milky, all at once is this bad boy, uh, the Antique Anatomy Tarot. This is a coffee house. This is my favorite flavor of coffee, which I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want everyone else to buy it up so that I have a hard time getting it at the store. It's my secret and I will gatekeep it, thank you very much. Also, you can only get it in Texas, so. <laughs> um, but yeah. The Antique Anatomy, this tastes like a morning cup of coffee to me. It's a pip deck. It's bones. It's flowers. The flowers are fake, they don't mean anything. The bones are real, they mean people. And sometimes they mean other things, like in this case a tower. Um, but yeah, that's the Antique Anatomy. And it is my coffee deck, my favorite beverage. And I actually keep my copy of that deck in this little velvet bag, uh, because velvet is just the vibe of it, I guess, uh, that richness. I've edged my copy, it did not come like that, uh, with, it, it came with a white edge rather than a, um, tan color, which is what I did. Um, it's more, it's so worn in that at this point it looks like it has aged to that color, which is perfect. That's what I love. Um, and so that's it. That is the, uh, hashtag I've got a deck for that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. This took a lot longer than I thought that it was going to take. I'm sorry that this video is as long as it is. This was only supposed to be like a little 20, 30 minute video. And here we are at what is probably going to be over 50 minutes. So um, thanks for sticking with me for all of this. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let me know what you think about any of these decks, most especially the ones that I made myself. I am very interested to know if any of y'all would want to purchase the Mixed Metaphor Mixed Media deck. Um, please let me know. Uh, I'm currently tossing around how it's going to look. Right now I've got it set at being poker sized. Um, I would love to be able to make a larger copy of it, but those cards get really expensive really fast, so the way to keep the price of the deck reasonable while still also having all the bells and whistles that I want is to keep it physically small. So that's what we're doing right now. I want linen cardstock, I want uh, I want it to have black borders, and I want it to have gilded edges, and um, yeah, that, that's just where we went with it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Like I said, let me know down in the comments. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, I am a new channel, and so every interaction you can possibly give this video is so helpful to me. Um, and subscribe if you think that I'm cool. Uh, leave a note in my locker, and, um, you know, we'll take it from there. I love you all so much. Bye.